Hi everybody, today I'm going to be debunking some very common ballet myths for you guys. Some are just very generic that if you don't know a lot about ballet are kind of a stereotype for ballet and some have to do with if you want to be a dancer, things you can kind of get out of your head that might give you some reassurance. Uh, I have 10 of them, so let's get started. So the first one is really obvious, it's one of the most common ballet myths in the world and that is that dancers do not eat. Wrong. Ballet dancers have to eat simply because of the amount of physical work it requires to be a ballet dancer. The typical schedule is about 10 o'clock in the morning to almost 10.30 or 11 at night. So think of it being in the gym 10 to 12 hours a day. You'd have to eat. You know, you rehearse all day long, you take class in the morning, you perform at night. If you don't eat, you're going to have some problems. Many dancers as ballet students starve themselves and then once they get into a company they kind of realize this isn't going to work. So they've got to eat. And ballet dancers can easily maintain their weight simply because of the amount of exercise they do. So myth number one, ballet dancers don't eat. Not true. Okay, myth number two is something that a lot of ballet students think you need to get into a company. You need perfect extension and perfect feet. Not true. Especially as a ballet student, you're constantly worried about having to get your leg wrapped around your head or having Alessandra Ferry arches and thinking that if you don't have those kind of feet or you're not a, you know, Gumby string bean, that you're not going to be a professional. That is absolutely not true. Please get that out of your head. Your leg does not need to be wrapped around your head. You do not need to be killing your point shoes after five minutes if, and having amazing arches. My feet were good. My extension was good. It wasn't brilliant, you know? And the thing about feet and extension is it's actually can be a hindrance if you have too good a feet or too good extension because it means your joints and your ligaments probably aren't as strong. So dancers with really bendy feet have trouble with jumps, they have trouble with hops on point, you know, any sort of quick ballet they struggle with. Same thing with dancers that have great extension. Their hips might not be as strong. So if you are a ballet student, please get it out of your head that you have to have perfect feet and extension to be a successful professional ballet dancer. Not true. All right, the third ballet myth is another very common ballet stereotype, and that is everything is pink and frilly and fairies. No. I think in my career at New York City Ballet, I maybe wore a pink tutu twice. Maybe. Sugar Plum and Aurora. Other than that, I was never in a pink tutu. It was dresses or leotards or some interesting costume or um, you know, sometimes with those balancing ballets you're in a tutu but it's not pink. You know, it, it's not all pink and frilly and fairies and swans, you know. Um, there are many modern ballets nowadays where you might be in a unitard, um, you might have a different sort of interesting costume. A lot of the fashion designers are getting into designing ballet costumes nowadays and very rarely do they make it a pink costume. So you're going to have different kinds of costumes and if you are a spectator, and you go to the ballet, probably nine times out of ten, you're not going to see a pink tutu. So, myth number three, all pink tutus? No. Alright, myth number four is that ballet is easy and glamorous. It's a very glamorous career. The glamorous part of a ballet career is probably nine percent of the time, which is your time on stage in the evening. The rest of the day, the rest of the, the time as a dancer is all blood, sweat, and tears. You constantly have to be in class pushing yourself. You know, you're pushing your body in extreme positions. All the kind of Pilates and cross training you have to do in your off time takes a toll. So you're constantly pushing yourself. You're constantly putting your body in non, you know, human positions. Our bodies were not designed to have legs up here and turned out and be, you know, on point. So the glamorous side of ballet is that time you're on the stage, but the amount of work that it takes to get to that point is the 91% of the time and it is not glamorous, it hurts, um, it's, it's tough mentally. You have to be very strong mentally to be a ballet dancer. So while it looks beautiful and it looks like dancers just go home and relax on their velvet sofas, not true. Alright, number five is that all men in ballet are gay. Not at all. I would say honestly it's about 50-50. Many men get into ballet by following their sisters to ballet class and they just happen to like it. They like the athletic side. They like being in, you know, the one guy in class with all women. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's probably 50-50. At one time, 
several of us kind of did a count at New York City Ballet, and I would say it was even maybe 60-40. 60% being straight, 40% being gay. Just because you see a male ballet dancer does not mean he is gay. All right, myth number six is that when you get into a company, you've arrived. Oh, I got into a company, I, don't, I no longer have to worry about it. No, if anything, it's the other way around. Once you get into a company, you have to work harder. You have to constantly prove yourself. You have to constantly, you know, keep challenging yourself and prove to the powers that be that you deserve a role, you deserve a solo, you deserve to be there. At School of American Ballet, those of us who got into the company were at the top of our class. You're at the top, you get the lead roles in the workshop performances, and then you get into the company and you go back to the bottom. Sometimes you will not dance all season. You will understudy everything, you will maybe be in the core in like two ballets, but you really have to pay your dues as a ballet dancer. You know, you have to work your way up all over again. So it's not all wine and roses once you join the company. And then for me, even getting promoted to soloist, it was like, okay, now I have to work even harder to prove that, yes, I deserve that promotion. I deserve to be a soloist. So if you get hired into a company, don't get stagnant. Really kind of push yourself, keep striving, because that's how you're going to have a successful career. All right, number seven is that you have to be young to be a ballet dancer, or you have to have started young to be a successful ballet dancer. That is not true. Great example is Misty Copeland. You all know who she is. She started ballet at 13, which is very, very late for a ballet dancer. And look at her now, you know? So you don't have to start like I did at two and a half to be a successful ballet dancer. You also don't have to be young to enjoy ballet. Many people take ballet in their youth, they quit, and they come back to it as adults. A lot of my viewers are adult ballet students and they do it because they love it. They do it because it's, it's fun, you know? They might not have any desire to be a professional ballet dancer, but that does not mean you can't take ballet. You know, anybody can take ballet. Why not? You have to have a certain level of training and have a certain level of technique in order to become a ballet dancer. But many people just, again, do it because they enjoy it. Having started young does not necessarily mean you will be a professional. Um, you might have started a little bit later and will be successful, or you might just start as an adult and do it for fun. You know, you'll figure out if you're good enough to be a professional dancer. It's not about age. It's about ability and technique and mental state. So many other things other than age. All right, number eight is that ballerinas are tall. Not necessarily. Ballet dancers are many different heights. You have to remember, point shoes are not just standing in a normal shoe. Point shoes make you completely change in height the entire length of your foot. People tell me all the time, I look about six feet tall on stage. I am five five. You know, because on point, you get that much taller. Most ballet dancers are between, I would say, 5'2 and 5'7. There are taller dancers, very successful taller dancers, but it's more of an average height kind of thing. Because of those shoes, you know, partnering, you have to take into account that you get taller. So most dancers are on the shorter side, um, but again, there are all different kinds of heights in ballet. You know, some famous ballet dancers are 5'10" women. So height in ballet is not that big of an issue, but in the sort of general scheme of ballet dancers, they're on the shorter side instead of the taller side. All right, number nine is that you have to attend a big ballet school in order to succeed and become a professional ballet dancer. Not true. Many ballet dancers go directly from their home schools, audition for companies, and get hired many of them, more so than not, because most dancers can't afford to move to a big city and go to a big ballet school. It's just not possible. They don't have enough spots. Um, so I know many, many dancers who just stayed at their home studio up until it was time to audition, took private lessons, took extra classes, worked really, really hard, auditioned for a company, and went directly there. So don't think you have to attend School of American Ballet, the JKO School, San Francisco Ballet School. That helps and you're going to get amazing training and you're more likely to get a job because companies, you know, having that on your resume looks really good, but you don't have to. It's not a must. The only exception, however, to the rule is that if you want to be in the New York City Ballet, you must attend the School of American Ballet. That's just the one exception. They only take dancers from the school. But for any other company, you can go directly from your home ballet school. All right, the last myth is something probably not a lot of people know. Just because you are a ballet dancer does not make you a ballerina. What? That title 
is reserved for principal dancers in a company. If you've ever heard me talk about myself, I don't say I was a ballerina with the New York City Ballet. I say I was a soloist with the New York City Ballet because technically the term ballerina has the word principal in front of it. Principal, ballerina. Core members are not ballerinas. Soloists are not ballerinas. Yes, the term is, you know, used loosely. Oh, she's a ballerina. Oh, she's a ballerina. What are you, you know, what is your job? I'm a ballerina. Yeah, that's fine. But if you want to get real technical, the correct term is reserved for principal dancers. You know, and often people, moms will say, oh, my little ballerina. That's fine. You know, I'm not trying to be like, oh, you shouldn't call your daughter that. I'm just telling you the actual correct usage of the word is reserved for the highest ranked dancers in a ballet company. Just how it is. So that's how I refer to, refer to myself. I'm a professional ballet dancer. I'm a, I'm a sol I was a soloist with the New York City Ballet. I usually, very, very, very rarely, unless it's like you have to kind of dumb it down, I very rarely say I'm a professional ballerina or I was a ballerina with the New York City Ballet because that's not correct terminology. Just a little food for thought. All right, you guys, so that is it. Ten myths about ballet debunked. You know, a lot of people think this is a very elitist profession. It's a very expensive, you know, only reserved for the upper class. But I think really we're getting away from that now, especially with all the attention ballet is getting, with Misty Copeland. You know, all those, we're trying to make it more available to everyone. So I hope this was a fun video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. I just wanted to do something kind of fun for all of you, you know, now and again. If you missed my 20 minute basic Pilates mat workout video, it is right there. You can click it to watch. Love you all so, so much as I say every time and I'll see you on Friday.